It's Wednesday, the 31st of May. One minute after getting airborne from Canberra, this is all there is down there. Because of the battle between Melbourne and Sydney, the Australians decided to build a completely new capital in the middle of nowhere. And so to Tasmania, Van Diemen's land, for two gigs, the first of which is in Launceston at the Country Club Hotel and Resort. This is a lovely place with a beautiful hotel, stunning gardens, a casino and a lovely performance space. Robin got us all to comment on the beauty of our surroundings. Unfortunately, he didn't switch the microphone on. I got a little camera shy, I'm afraid. We are brought here by an old friend of the band, Susan Farrell. As she says herself, Susan doesn't do photographs, but she does do a very good job organising gigs. After the gig, Alan had the chance to meet up with another old friend, David Logie, who brought the band out here to the casinos years ago. It's amazing when you go around the world you meet kind of people in bizarre places. Toby here was um, a barman in uh, Edinburgh's very famous Sandy Bells and uh, he's seen us in three countries so far. What have you thought so far then Toby? <laughs> what have you thought so far then Toby? Oh. Just amazing, mate. Ripping. Baza. Probably most famous for your bar work, I would have said. And my one liner. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Once more into the Batmobile and south to our next gig in Hobart. We've stopped in a place called Campbelltown, which is halfway between Launceston in Tasmania and Hobart. And below me, there's a bunch of uh, bricks, which is called Brick Road. And these are commemorating the convicts sentenced to Tasmania. Here's one that says, Sarah Brame stole two brooches and she was sentenced to 14 years, arriving with her daughters in 1832. Henry Curtis, age 20, got life for highway robbery and he married Mary Owens who was sentenced to seven years for larceny. Here's an interesting one here. Patrick Kearney, age 25, he got sentenced to life and he arrived on the boat to the Catherine Stewart Forbes. James Blay, who arrived on the Indefatigable in 1811, seven years for stealing shoes. And the whole pavement along here is just filled with these bricks. And every one of them commemorates a convict. Two hundred years later, and we've just been sitting in the cafe, drinking uh, cappuccino and having panini. This island is full of stories from its time as Van Diemen's Land, an island prison for the British penal system a kind of a virtual 19th century Asbo. Here's one story, and the bridge at Ross, just south of Campbelltown, has a starring role. Irish men John Mitchell and Thomas Meeker were transported for life. Leaders of the failed Young Ireland Rising of 1848, they were free to live in strictly separated districts of the island. Separate, they would be of little danger to good order. But they soon realised they were only divided by the Macquarie River, which runs through the town of Ross. Being men of imagination, they arranged for a table to be set dead centre on the bridge. Seated comfortably, at either end, they could talk and plot, and yet not break the rules. And plot they surely did. For in 1852, they had escaped to America. There, they continued to lead extraordinary lives, 
and are still toasted as heroes of Irish history to this day. Amazing people make for amazing stories. Stop, you crazy fool! Hobart, and our concert tonight is at the Rest Point Casino on the banks of the Derwent River with the silhouette of Mount Wellington in the distance. A beautiful situ, luxurious accommodation and another fine gig organised again by Susan Farrell. Thanks Susan. We have an early flight to Brisbane tomorrow, so just enough time for a few drinks and you never know, Mike might win a wee something on the roulette, which means he'll be paying for breakfast tomorrow.